Hi friends, please welcome to the part 37. We are looking at AZ900 real certification questions. Do not forget to click the join button. If you join and become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja, you will get access to a lot more certification content. If you are a first time user, please hit the subscribe button. This will help you stay tuned to some of the latest certification content. This channel is primarily dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications. Now let us jump into the questions. So you have SQL Server instances and with these instances so you have SQL Server instances and then you must uh, you know you have so many instances you don't have one you have several instances in Azure environment and finally you get a message to increase your Azure subscription limits that means something got messed up at the database level and uh, it exceeded the limits now you want to increase the limits so what is the limit that uh, SQL Server provides? So the database provides 1.5 to 2 terabytes of database, single database limit. Okay. So if you have to increase that, you want to increase the limits. The options are first you create a service health alert. So you have a service health portal and what this portal does is it provides you customizable dashboard. And what does it track? It tracks the health of Azure services. There are various services in the regions. It will help you track that. For example, VM can be one of the service or Synapse Analytics. Power BI can be one of the service, but this will not help you with increasing the limits. So this is wrong. B says you upgrade the support plan. So you can have these support plans. If you see this, you have request support, basic developer standard and professional direct. And these are the features it is supporting. So if you see the support plan, it does not have the options or any of these options will not help you increase the limit. Hence B is wrong. C says you modify the Azure policy. So this is a total misfit because Azure policies have a different purpose. If you want to enforce organizational standards and you want to comply at scale, then you use Azure policy. That is the main purpose to help you comply with certain set of standards. For example, if you are working on a healthcare project, then you want to comply with HIPAA compliance. That is something which these policies will help you comply with. You can also create policies. For example, if you are creating a VM, the VM will be only having this much capacity so that you save on the cost of running the VM unless there is an exceptional approval to create big VMs. Uh, it will not be created. So option C is wrong as well. That leaves us with one answer. This is my answer. We will create a new support request. So this is a documentation which is more or less linked to this topic and how what you do. You create a support request. How do you do it? These are the steps. You can pause this video and read this carefully. Okay, so we got the final answer. D is my final answer. Now let us quickly look at this question. There are three questions here and for each one of these you have to mark a yes or a no. So the first question is saying each Azure subscription can have multiple account administrators. This answer is no because you can only have one account administrator. So if you see this documentation, there is an account administrator and this role, this person by default, it will assume the, uh, the role of a service administrator for the subscription. There is only one of this role. And what are the other roles? There are owners, contributors, readers and user access administrators. These are the different roles. So the answer in this case is no. Let us look at second option, second answer. It is saying each subscription can be managed only using a Microsoft account. No, you can have an Azure cloud account and you can still manage it. So this would be my answer. No. And the third one says a resource group contains multiple Azure subscriptions. See the purpose of resource group. The purpose is so that you can create a logical grouping. It is a container that holds related resources. For example, you have certain set of resources for HR department, certain set of resources for finance department. Then you can create resource groups which are logical containers and you can tag or assign the resources to that resource group. That is the purpose. Okay. And you can pause this video and understand how to create these resource groups. See, subscriptions is the first step you do and resource groups are created under a subscription. Within a resource group, you cannot create multiple subscriptions. That is wrong. So my answer would be no in this case. So these are my final answers. All are no. Let us look at this question. It is asking about you want to create a virtual machine and you need to specify which storage service must be used. So these are different storage services, file share, queues, tables and containers which one we should use to store unmanaged data disks unmanaged data disks are like vhd disks so unmanaged disk means it will not protect you against a single storage scale unit outage if a storage scale is out then 
it will not give you protection your data will be lost that is unmanaged but with managed you will get this protection it will manage and uh, it is highly available which provides these features so if you see containers these are a set of blobs similar to a directory in a file system just like a folder in your windows explorer you can have unlimited number of containers for example in windows explorer you can have unlimited number of folders and here in a container you can store unlimited number of blobs 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 so your vhd files they are also blobs they are unmanaged disks but they are also blobs now which type of blobs they are page blobs if you see this vhd virtual hard drive files this is what our question is referring to these are page blobs which can be stored in the containers that's why this container would be my right answer now what are file shares if you look at file shares what are these file shares you can use file shares and you can mount it concurrently on cloud or on on premises so these are just like your uh, in the aws world you have efs systems these are just like your you can mount it externally and it will work with your cloud as well as on premises even though it is from azure product but it also works with on premises we do not store page blobs in file shares so that's why this answer is wrong so i will strike this out and let us understand queues when you talk about queues this is also wrong queues is majorly used in the scale of uh, in, when you are having use cases for example you have real time data integration and messages need to be mm -hmm. passed that is when you use queues because it helps you store large number of messages and it is just kind of a messaging piece if you have that kind of functionality you can store the messages up to 64 kb then we have tables tables is also wrong here tables is used to store non relational structured data for example you have something like no sql like mongo database or cassandra these databases if you are migrating the data into azure then you can use table storage table storage is primarily used with databases which databases no sql databases no sql databases are different than relational data sources okay that is the purpose of table storage it is going to deal with large number of structured data in our question do we see any requirement of you know these tables no sql database no there is no requirement we just have a managed data disk that needs to be stored and this is also not example of queues that's why only containers would be my final answer so friends please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and do not forget to join as well there are a plethora of contents available with for a small premium you can gain access you can gain access to a lot of contents which are totally aimed at helping you with cloud certifications see you in the next part